Hey, what's up? I'm not sure what medium I want to use today, but I'm going to be drawing Grace Jones. I'll put some in my hand for Dashie. I love this photo of her, everything about it. It was in black and white. She had this black outfit on with a black hat and some sort of shawl situation that, that enveloped the rest of her, her neck and everything. I don't know. It was just, it was just so elegant and ferocious at the same time. I'm really big on hats and shape. A few years, not a few years back, a long time ago, I was really, really, really into Lady Gaga. And in one show she was on, she said a lot of what goes into her choosing her outfits, who by the way, that's another person who was largely influenced by Grace Jones or a person who just copied from Grace Jones, but whatever. Gaga said a lot of what goes into her choosing an outfit is if she walked through some sort of, I guess, doorway or wall, what kind of shape would she leave? I thought that was a pretty cool way of going about things. And I love the shape of this. I love the silhouette of the photo and I love what Grace Jones is wearing. I love the face she was serving. I've never been like a huge follower or fan. I remember her a lot from whenever I was a kid. I used to watch Conan the Barbarian with my dad. The medium I'm most comfortable with is, is pencil. That's what I've been drawing with my entire life. So using pencil is nothing. Now I'm gonna start with pencil. I'm probably gonna go over it, maybe enhance it with other stuff. I'm not sure, we'll find out. Okay, I think we're ready to go. Okay, what was I saying? I used to watch Grace Jones on Conan the Barbarian. And I remember my dad and my mom telling me that, I remember them telling me that she was a supermodel. And that blew my mind because, you know, as a kid, my standard of beauty was not as expansive as it is now. And as far as I was concerned, supermodels, no matter what color they were, what they looked like, they looked like Barbie dolls, they looked like women. And so she was so unique looking. I'm not saying she's ugly. I don't think she's ugly at all. I think she's very attractive. But as a child, I was like, mm, I don't know how that's happening. You know, I didn't understand how iconic she was and, and probably the reason she was a model because she was so different and unique and confident and, you know, Grace Jones. But I know that I find her exciting. Exciting enough to draw this picture. I might hang this on my wall too. I might take y'all with me to go get this framed. Who knows? Okay, see, I've gotten my hands all oily. I haven't thought this through. So stand by for just a second. Let me get this previous page that bled through on my other drawing. We're gonna use that as the cover whenever I start really leaning in on this picture. Ha! Huh. Y'all remember that one? I'm gonna fold this up. I can also use this as a test page too before I commit to something I put on the final product. You know, I recommend that. And I'm pretty sure most artists recommend that. Kind of testing out your materials or the shading technique, whatever you're gonna do on, a, on another page before you just go ahead and commit to the actual drawing. You're gonna see a lot of this happening throughout the video. A lot of fill it in, rub it out. Fill it in. I feel like y'all deserve to be a little closer than this. Okay, I think that's much better. You know what y'all have to do is you have to remind me to zoom back out. Whenever I go to another portion of her face, I hate to be filming this like, oh yeah, everything's cool, yay, honky dory. And then it's totally out of focus or something's not even in the frame. I like this part. I've always loved I've always felt really comfortable drawing human faces, but one of my favorite parts are the lips and the eyes. Hands down. Don't know why, but I love the lips and the eyes. It's my favorite part of drawing a face. Maybe the eyes because that's what brings the, the picture to life. Brings the person's face to life. And lips just because, I don't know, I just like lips.
to be completely honest with you, I'll be glad when I'm done with this portion. I don't know, I'm just so over it. I'm already bored. <laughs> Usually this is therapeutic for me, but I guess because I'm just so filled with anxiety for whatever reason, I guess I'm just thinking about so many other things I have to do. But I wanna get this video up. I wanna get some more content up. But this right here, I guess I'm not as much in the mood to be doing it. So far it's going really well, but I just, I guess I haven't really done a really detailed sketching piece in so long that I forgot how time consuming it is. But it's coming out well, so. Maybe I should stop complaining. This looks crazy right now, but once I blend all this stuff out and do all the shading, it's gonna be bomb again. It'll be bomb. Look at that, coming together. I've learned that sometimes the key to drawing something that seems overwhelming or a little complicated to you is not to look at it as a whole, but as individual shapes, or look at tiny parts of it and try to master that portion. And before you know it, the whole thing, the whole structure will be intact. That's kind of how I approach this one. I already had kind of the nose laid out, but I needed to readjust it in some areas. And instead of looking at the whole nose, I just looked at little portions of the nose and drew little circles and little different shapes and whatnot. And that's an exercise I learned whenever I was a kid on how to draw different things, was to draw it by making little shapes, find the shapes in anything you're drawing, and then kind of shade and adjust and tweak it. Before you know it, you have whatever it is you're drawing. And in this case, it's Grace's nose. dirty and ruining my nail polish so I'm using cotton now it's kind of like a beauty blender for the paper let me say this while these fucking obnoxious dogs are quiet for a second I have this thing where if I'm doing really large portraits of pretty women with full lips I like to do everything and wait to do the lips last I don't know why but like I said before, I really enjoy doing lips. I really enjoy doing lips, so I wanted to get everything else out of the way and do these last, so here we go. We're losing the light, so I'm gonna go get some black paint and we'll be done. Okay, so y'all have seen those photos where the focus is three-dimensional, however, the rest is two-dimensional. I happen to live for that. I love that effect. So I'm going to be doing that today with her headgear and her, her dress, or whatever she's wearing here. It's so avant-garde. I love this photo. Let me not get too overzealous because I'm being a dumbass and I'm not putting this on a surface where I can get messy. Okay, so it might be time for a little bit of reapplication. Ooh, ooh, let me not interfere with the face. No, this is gonna be so pretty. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Air my gear. Time for a little bit of reapplication. Gosh, has that lasted almost the whole picture? I mean, I might not have to do too much of this. Just one little, one little dot. I think that'd be enough. Let's try it. Let's start with that. <laughs> Girl. Yes, 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 yes. 
but you know we're not done, right? Well, should, should, I leave it as, should I leave it as is? I don't know. Hmm. I think it's good as is. A part of me really wants to paint the background purple, but another part of me thinks I should just leave it. What do y'all think? Is it more commanding without any color in the background? You know, I think in this case, less is more. And with that being said, thank you for joining me once again. I will see you later. Bye.